So good morning everybody and welcome to the channel. Uh, today it's not raining, the cloud base is reasonable, visibility is a bit murky, a bit pea soup, but it's it's all legal. Got lots of horizontal visibility but it's just a bit yeah. Anyway, um, I'm off to Cheddar Gorge this time. wanted to fly over it for a while it's only about 26 miles away so I'm just going to do a loop and there and back but don't run away I've got some more questions this time and it should suit everyone from all around the world and not just UK specific or anything like that anyway so stand by when we get on route I'll, uh, I'll give you the questions as we go along uh, and have a bit more fun anyway some of you might notice as well it's all doing this while the engine is warming up um, that I've actually got a new flying suit and I hate, those that know me say, I hate being cold. I've got heated gloves. I think there was a chap that commented on the last video, was it JJ? You, you said, should I do a talk about heated gloves? I can only really talk about the ones I've used. The ones I'm using at the moment, I've been using for a couple of years now. And they're by a brand called 37. I'm assuming that's uh, it's 30 SEV. And I'll leave a link to what I use. I think they're, they're already in the description of my videos anyway. Um, I think that's to do with the core temperature, 37, 30 SEV EM. Um, and, and I find them okay, a few other people don't like them, but they're all heated glove, no, nothing to plug into, just batteries. And I get about four or five hours out of them, So, and that's on hot, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with those. But this is the new, I think it's exact uh, flying suit from Ozzy. A few more checks to do, and then we'll get underway. That smoke is going straight up, there is virtually no wind, but there's a little bit from the south. So let's go for it. <laughs> Good. Lining up. Okay. Route is plotted. And I'm happy. Let's go for it. Our neutral. Temps are good, RPM is good, everything is covered in grass. But, oh, that viz is gorgeous now. Just see it's a murk. Not sure if this camera will ever pick that up, but uh, it's in the murk. Right, let's get on the cruise throttle and get on route. Ugh. Getting attacked by grass today. So, one question someone asked me recently, they saw me using my phone in flight to take pictures and they went, I hope that's tied on. I can guarantee you, everything I use is lashed on. Even the stylus, I'm sure we can see that. Even the stylus is lashed on. The UD is lashed onto that. My phone is tied to a cord in my pocket. Um, I think it comes back slightly to my, uh, my paramotoring days where if you dropped anything, yeah, I lost it. There was nowhere to go. There's nothing, nowhere to put it. I mean, I got a little bit more here, but um, long and short of it, I've uh, I don't want to lose anything. So everything is lashed on. I say even this top camera is is actually lashed on. So we just left Glebe Farm. Uh, I say if anyone doesn't know where that is in area wise, it's in uh, South Somerset. These are, this is the Quantox Ridge. Uh, Taunton is there. Wellington is there. A pottery raised a paramotor from, I'm, a, I'm still a member so I go back and land in every now and again, is about 20 miles that way or so, so yeah, oh look at that sun, can you tell I haven't flown for about four weeks, I reckon I've got about a 2,000 foot cloud base today, I can see all the way to Burnham on the sea now, so yeah I'll give you a little bit of a route, <laughs> it's very much there and back today. I just wanted to go to Cheddar Gorge. I've walked it before, um, many years ago, and I thought, do you know what, that would be really nice just to go and see what it looks like from the air. Um, 
I get close to uh, to Bristol's airspace, but that's about 3,000 feet above me. If I get anywhere near that, something's gone really wrong. Yeah, we're not far from Bridgewater. Burnham on seas there, Bridgewater's over there. And it's pretty much smack bang between the middle. So I hope you enjoy the questions that I'm going to give you. Uh, I'm going to shut the cameras down and just enjoy the route, take some pictures and uh, hopefully I will rejoin you uh, when I get back to Glebe Farm. Because uh, it's just a little flight today, nothing uh, nothing too adventurous. So say it's been four weeks since I've flown and just want to get back in the saddle as it were. Um, uh, anyway, so join you in a bit everyone. Question number one. Question one. What is an agonic line? If you know it, you know it. If you don't, it'll be one of those things that you'll go, ooh, I didn't know that. Um, so what is an agonic line? A-G-O-N-I-C. It's to do with um, charts, maps, etc. So that's the first question today. A little bit of met here. A little bit of met. Oh, we're getting caught up in my new, new hood. So we're just keeping a good lookout for any uh, any land out options. Always look out. Always look out. So the second question is: What are the three main cloud types? There are lots of other subdivisions, but what are the three main cloud types? question it's a little bit of a geeky one this and I quite like this one the more I looked into it because I had a bit of a brain fart when I started researching it and learning again a lot of these uh, questions are from me learning again so the third question if you have the same volume of parcel of air and you have a dry air mass and a completely saturated air mass, and they're both the same volume, which one is heavier? Is the dry air mass heavier than the saturated air mass? Or is the saturated air mass dry, uh, heavier than the dry air mass? So which one is, dry, which one is, is lighter? And you get a bonus point if you know which of the gas laws this pertains to. There's a very particular gas law that goes into this. And uh, my brain, brain went, ah, that's exactly why. I'm not very good at chemistry um, uh, and on a molecular level, but this one really clicked with me. But all those answers for questions one, two, and three are all in the description. And I hope you enjoy them.
was a little bit of a slog on the way back. There must be a really big wind gradient today. Uh, got there in about 20 odd minutes, 25 minutes, and it's taken me over an hour to get back. So uh, trundling along at 20, 25 miles an hour, picking up now uh, as I'm descending back down again. But anyway, uh, sorry there weren't too many good close-up shots of the uh, the Cheddar Gorge. Um, I didn't really feel very safe with in terms of land outs. Very big, the Cheddar Village, the reservoir, the gorge, you could land on top, but I didn't really want to get stuck there, so I scooted around the edge and came back. So anyway, uh, rejoin checks are pretty much complete, and I uh, just want to give you a bit of a feedback of how the, the gloves and the, the new suit are going. Someone asked me recently about why I've taken the button off. I think a lot of the time it's just one more thing to get plugged into, and uh, I kind of got a bit faffed off with it. So just pressing the button is, uh, is just as easy for me. Um, and I don't mind doing it. It's very much a keep it simple stupid, and that's one of the things I like about the microavionics. You've got options if you want it. I say just to press the button on the side of the headset is, is easy. Glee Farm Traffic, Glee Farm Traffic is Golf, Foxtrot, Whisker Lima, Romeo, inbound to you from the east, four miles to run, joining for overhead join to confirm wind direction. Glee Farm. So I'm pretty sure the wind is from the south, but uh, it's so light and variable, it's quite strong up high, but down low, nothing really seems to be moving, which is why it's been a little bit choppy today. Because oh. I use the Sky Echo 2, and I'll try and take a bit of a close-up picture, a, a friend of mine, um, Andy Bex, is an absolute wizard with making things in a, on a 3D printer and he's made a bracket for this. He makes them for paramotors and he's redesigned this one to work on the PB front strut. So all you do is click in, twist and put the Velcro strap over the front of it, or the back of it in this case. Um, and it just makes my life a lot easier than what I was doing before. I use all the standard mounts, so literally ram mount, click, click, and it's in. So I'll leave a link to the description of that item uh, in, in the video if you're interested. Now the fun bit, let's get down. It's biasing to the south, but you can always go around. Okay, so we've got loads of time. Let's start the chicks. So, fonts, fuel. Now I've got sufficient for a go around if required. Uh, awareness can hear nothing. Volume's turned up. Volume is turned up. Can't hear anything. There's nobody else on the airfield. That's good. Wind, a variable and very light, so you're not too bad. Uh, nose wheel steering, giving it a wiggle, and it is straight. The hand throttle is closed, trim is fixed. Someone asked me about why I check the uh, the trim and say it's fixed. Well, there is no trim, but if I fly another aircraft, it's got a trim. It means I'm still running through that part of the check. Uh, and security, I am still secure, my helmet is still secure, so that's downwind checks complete. Yeah, it does seem to be biasing from that way. Slight crosswind. Checking final, no one's coming in on final. Forward float, flyby, come on, speed, centre line. Okay, looking long. Hey, hey! That's very slippy. Happy with that. 
Temps are good, RPMs, idle's good. And don't run away, we'll go for a debrief in a minute. Oh, I am warm, uh, but that's more so because I probably just put the aircraft away as well. Anyway, um, Lots happened on that flight, uh, although it was just a straight out and there and back, and uh, hopefully you'll see the pictures, very few pictures. I didn't want to get over the top of Cheddar uh, because there were no real outs other than landing right on the top, and there's such a small gap between that and the Bristol uh, airspace. Um, I, uh, I didn't want to get over the top of Cheddar. So anyway, I took some, took some pictures, flew there. It was a little bit of a slog on the way back. There must have been a bit, of, a bit lopsided there. Must have been a little bit of a, a, a much stronger wind gradient up high, virtually nothing down below. All the smoke was going up. In the valleys all just straight up um, but, uh, but up high you could definitely see the, the clouds whizzing across the gloves i've got are not the best um, they were on full the entire time i actually take my hand out at one point to take some pictures because i can't do it with the gloves on and for me that was a bit of an annoyance i couldn't use the gloves on my screen uh, there are better gloves out there i say these are only 3.7 volt uh, lithium polymers and they were charged the, the before the flight um, but they kept my hands warm they weren't hot, but they weren't cold, so that's the main bit. The other thing is, you may have noticed that the colours change on my flying suit, as, as I mentioned. The other OZ, I've had three OZs. The first one was a red and black. Uh, that got destroyed when I hit some power lines. Uh, video link here. Um, the yellow one I bought as an impromptu one straight away afterwards, uh, and it's a little bit snug. Even a year and a bit ago, two years, four years ago, it was a bit snug then. I... Uh, I was not cold by any stretch. This suit is much warmer than my other uh, yellow Uzi flying suit. That's probably more for a, uh, a late in the year or, or um, early spring, but this is definitely my, uh, my winter suit. I was not cold at all for nearly the two hour flight. And one thing I'd like to say is everything I get from the channel I put back into the channel. There are music subscriptions, um, the bits and pieces you'll see today, and hopefully I'll do a, a vlog. You'll notice that I'm wearing a, lav, uh, a, a Bluetooth microphone. These are for future things I'm gonna have to do. So the sound recording on that is going directly via Bluetooth. These are all little bits and pieces that will make my life easier when I do future vlogs. Um, and so all the money I get, I reinvest. It's not cheap, but again, I'm trying to improve the quality of the videos I'm making. Uh, the flight today was brilliant. It was just under two hours, hour and 45 there and back. Uh, lovely landing on the way back in and it was just nice to be back in the air. I think the last time I flew was late November uh, and it was nice just to get my, uh, my bottom back up in the air. I really hope you enjoyed those questions. Um, I, uh, I hope they're useful. A little bit of teaser um, and say they're, uh, they're, they're nothing that uh, any instructor that if anyone's learning wouldn't be able to explain to them or you can a lot of them you can just google um, and find out the answer um, i like trying to find the geeky ones because they're the ones that most people wouldn't know the answers to uh, just a bit of a tease a bit of fun on the way uh, on, on the flight so let's wrap this video up here and as i always say until next time everybody fly safe